First of all, thanks a lot for having us. Uh, my name is Alexander Moore. Um, we are from EFA. This is the European Flavor Association. We are based here in Brussels. And I'm going to give you an overview over the recent EU strategy, commission strategy, about the so-called EU Green Deal, what it means, and how it's going to affect the ingredients industry and the flavor industry. Next slide, please. So we're going to give you a short context. That means I'm going to introduce EFA briefly to you so that you understand um, where we are coming from. Then uh, what is the EU Green Deal and the so-called farm to fork strategy, the very core of today's presentation. Then the policy objectives and potential legislation. And then, of course, also the elephant in the room. How does this actually then affect the ingredients and the flavorings industry? Next slide, please. So very short introduction about EFA. You will see now on the next slide that we have um, an, an overview. Our membership consists of national associations and companies. Next slide, please. Where we are, um, where we are having a, a broad overview over the legislative developments on EU level in all the EU member states. Um, we have 12 national associations and 11 companies, which gives us a very detailed and at the same time helicopter overview over all policy developments related to EU policy when it comes to flavorings and ingredients here on EU level. We have uh, within the companies all the big flavoring companies producing in Europe, uh, Givaudan, uh, Mann, Roberté, IFF, uh, you name it, they are all direct members of EFA and we have the national associations. And this is extremely important because certain policy developments are made on the member state level, so on national level. And here we can, as a European association, internally, but also versus our stakeholders externally, um, speak with one voice as an industry. Um, this information goes, of course, two ways, from a European level into our uh, national associations, and at the same time from the national associations to our uh, European uh, association, EFA. This is a very nice setup to have uh, the possibility to react to policy developments, but also the possibility to speak with one voice. We are a partner of the European institutions, the European Commission, the European Parliament. Um, and here we are able to be a partner in the policy developments to speak uh, on behalf of the industry and represent their interests. You see on the right hand side two elements, the flavor days and the so-called flavor ambassadors. We have since 2017 initiated so-called flavor days all over Europe, where we invite policymakers, customers, customer associations um, to discover the future of food, to discover what are the latest trends, how is policy developed, what are the main policy challenges in the single countries. And this has to be proven a very successful concept. You see now we have 10 flavor days. They span from uh, Paris to Berlin to Spain. We covered basically most of the European member states so far. And this is a concept we're going to develop further in the coming years. And uh, please look out, join us when you are around. It's, it's for sure it's worthwhile. And then we have the 39 flavor ambassadors. Why do I mention this? We are a rather small industry, but we have a very dedicated uh, membership and the people working for this industry are extraordinary, are very passionate about their work. We are introducing the different job profiles. We're making interviews and videos just to showcase a little bit what this industry does, how it does it, and to be um, uh, to, to show the passion within the industry. This has to be proven a very, uh, also a fun concept, but also very educational. So if you have a chance, have a look at our website. Uh, you can find a broad spectrum of what we do. And next slide, please. So this brings us now to the presentation, the EU's Green Deal 
and the so-called farm to fork strategy. Um, I'm gonna go into the details a little bit later. You see, we put Green Deal in green, just to make clear in which direction all this goes. You have to see the Green Deal as the umbrella term, and then the farm to fork strategy, what is related to the food and drink industry. And I'm gonna uh, show you a little bit how this is basically structured. Next slide, please. So the EU Green Deal, to make it very broad, the idea is to make the economy sustainable. So that sounds already very, very broad undertaking. But if you start looking into the different aspects of this Green Deal, this has the potential to change the way the EU is going to produce in the future. And that's the whole idea, basically to make the EU's economy more sustainable. For the food industry, this translates into a strategy, the so-called farm to fork strategy. You already see by the terminology used, it comprises the whole supply chain from the farm, from the, from the, let's call it raw material to the fork to the consumer. This is an extremely ambitious undertaking. Um, it's about food systems that are fair, about food systems that are healthy, about food systems that are environmentally friendly on top of everything. So with other words, more sustainable. We had over the last years here on EU different buzzwords when it comes to, um, to make systems more resource efficient, to make systems more environmentally friendly. And now they use the word sustainable, sustainable because you're basically touching on economic, social and environmental aspects. So it's a really a very comprehensive way to tackle this issue, but that also means it will be a very difficult, a very long process with a lot of different opinions by different stakeholders on what actually sustainable means in the context of food and drink systems, but also what is actually the right way forward. You see here a, a quote by Franz Timmermans. He's the executive vice president of the European Commission. So the number two after Mrs. van der Leyen. And he says, at the heart of the Green Deal, the biodiversity and farm to fork strategies point to a new and better balance of nature, food systems and biodiversity. Again, very big ambitions. Let's see what that actually means. Next slide, please. To put all this in a context to understand the scope of this undertaking, just two, three very simple numbers to give you an idea. We have a turnover of roughly 1.2 billion euros per year of the food and drink sector. We have an employment of yeah, 4.7 million people. It's the leading employee in the EU. So now you can imagine if you change one little element out of this food and drink chain, which is already pretty resource efficient if you compare it to other regions in the world, you actually have a huge impact on the single elements, it means raw materials, uh, production, consumer, changing behavior of consumers, very big cripple effects. And we have to look into this where we also, and here I speak on behalf of the flavor industry, how we can contribute in this process, where do we stand in this process, and how can we be supportive of some of those elements. Next slide, please. So now we're going a little bit into the policy objectives and potential legislation. On purpose, we try to be very straightforward and use the main elements because there's simply no time to go into all the details. But uh, bear with me, I think it's worth it. Next slide, please. So you see here a very clear, a very uh, clean overview. And I, I'm gonna run with you to these five elements, which we believe are the cornerstones of this farm to fork strategy. On the one hand, we have the so-called healthy and sustainable choice. So the idea is that the easy choice should be the healthy choice for the consumer. The consumer will have this as their kind of, let's say, um, reference product in the market, and it's easy to get, um, to get hold of those products. Then we have the second thing, which is the food labeling to empower consumers to choose healthy and sustainable diets. Well, this is already becoming an extremely complex topic. 
food labeling over the last 20 years has changed a lot. There are a lot of different views by consumers, by customers, by industry, what should actually entitle a food labeling. Should it entitle also environmental impacts? Should it entitle long-term sustainable impacts? Um, what about regional, local diets? How is that, how is that, uh, how does that find a role in food labeling? So there are a lot of discussions and uh, in, in my personal belief is we are with food labeling. This is a discussion going on since the 1980s and it will stay with us for much longer than the discussion on sustainability of food. Food labeling is definitely a topic that will stay with us. Then stepping up uh, against food waste. This is a topic that increasingly gaining momentum. Um, you, it, it comes basically from the simple number that it's estimated that from the production of the raw materials of food until the consumer, there is a food waste of around 30%. So if you are a policymaker and you see food waste of 30% along the supply chain, of course, you think to yourself, we should, we should uh, cover this. We should see what we can do with this. Um, I'm just I'm just putting this number forward. It's one of the of the cornerstones. You can say making the food chain more resource efficient, um, but that is of course uh, a question: how much room is there to to further improve? And then there's research and innovation. This is for us in our DNA. We are uh, reinvesting 10% uh, of our annual turnover and average on the company level into research and innovation. This is something we are having a very keen eye on. We, we like this approach. Um, this is something we, we have, uh, it's in the core of what we do. And then the promoting the global transition. This is of course a very ambitious undertaking. We are talking here about two different elements. The one is of course that the European Union sets standards by doing what it does also globally, indirectly, but also they want to promote this on the more global um, uh, supply chain, a more sustainable approach. There remains a little bit to be seen how this is going to be then uh, done in detail, but this will be a much longer process than just a policy development. Next slide, please. So now we come to the, to the, to the main point. How does this affect the ingredients and flavorings industry? Next slide. I want you to have a look at the, at the center of why we put this forward. The impact in all the food chain could be extreme. I mentioned that earlier in my introductory statement. Why is that? If you just look at the moment how a small elements in a changing policy can have an impact on the overall, let's say, economic system of the food and drink supply chain, it's getting even more dramatic if you use the word organic. At the moment, it is estimated around 8% um, of agricultural production is organic, 8%. The European Commission's plan and its strategy is to increase this from 8% to 25%. You can imagine what this means for prices, what this means for demand for uh, materials, what this means in, in, for consumer. Is there enough organic material to start with? What would be the costs for that? And so forth. Do we have enough agricultural space to actually produce these amounts and so forth? So there is a lot already just by the work organic that can have a potential impact on the overall food and drink system and how it's produced. But that's exactly the idea and the very core of what uh, farm to fork strategy is. The second element, and if you combine just these two elements, is if you have a, a if you want to reduce the use of pesticides, like the European Commission plans to do in its strategy, by fifty percent, and increase the organic from eight to twenty-five, you can already say this is such a dramatic change in the way we're going to produce food and drinks in the future it will have huge impacts on a lot of other elements um, i mentioned environment earlier i mentioned the consumers earlier there are a lot of different elements and at the moment this is a very very ambitious target so look out for the word organic it will be kind of in the center of the developments when it comes to policy development next slide please we as flavors we look into into these de uh, developments rather uh, i say uh, um, 
positive. We see it as an opportunity. We see it as a huge challenge for the food and drink industry, but it is also a great tool for innovation, a driver for innovation. Pleasure is was always a driver for innovation, and here the flavorings industry is very well positioned. Um, the food innovation trends, variety of senses, we are, and I mentioned it earlier, um, we are um, investing 10% of research and development into uh, new products, new flavorings, new experiences. So investment is much higher than in other areas of the industry. It is what we do. Um, the consumers want new experiences. They want to have tasteful food. And this is why we are looking into this um, with a open heart. Uh, but it will also be a huge challenge for the years to come. Next step, please. So one of these unique opportunities, we have we've just put here some of these elements that are constantly occurring and are in the public debate here in Brussels, plant-based proteins. I'm pretty sure everybody has heard in one way or the other about plant-based proteins and their applications. Reduced salt, reduced sugar, reduced fat, recommendations by the World Health Organization. All these elements are constantly coming in. It's, it's about what are the choices the consumers want to make for their lifestyle, maybe for their health, what is the right product for them at the right time. And here we believe we can find solutions for the consumers as we did in the past and we will in the future and always without compromising on taste. This is why we're here. This is where we can bring an added value also to the discussions and where we believe it's gonna can make a huge difference. Next step, please. Next slide. So to, to wrap it up, and in a nutshell, um, flavorings are a drivers of change. We are key partners in making the healthy choice easy for consumers, fulfilling the expectations of the food and drink industry and the policymakers alike. We are partners in this process. We are here in Brussels working very closely with the Commission, the members of the European Parliament and uh, the member states. We work very closely with our national associations and our companies to bring this discussion forward, to make contributions that help bring the discussions forward. All this, of course, science-based, and uh, we believe there can be a lot of opportunity in these developments but look out for some of these elements because the impacts for the food ind industry for the years to come can be dramatic. Next slide. And with this, I would like to thank you very much. Um, also, um, thank you for your time staying with me on this more dry topic. But uh, if you have any questions, please come back to us. We put the website, uh, our social media channels here on the, on the last slide as well. Please get in touch if you have any questions. Uh, my team, myself, we will all be happy to answer if there are any follow-up questions coming to us. Yeah, thank you very much.